Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to my channel, and welcome to my second list video. My first one, 10 Greek Myths Turn Superheroes, was far more successful than I thought it would be, and has brought me a slew of new subscribers. If you missed that one, you can click the link in the top right hand corner. A second video though is now long overdue. So in this one I'm listing 5 major weapon archetypes used by heroes and I'm tracing their incarnations through pop culture, traditional mythology, and of course, superheroes. As in the last video, I'm not counting comic book weapons and characters that come straight out of ancient mythology, like Thor's hammer or Hippolyta's girdle. I'm focusing on reincarnations of the archetypes, rather than adaptations. So let's get started. Number 1. The Destined The one chooses the wizard, Mr. Potter. It's not always clear why, but I think it is clear that we can expect great things from you. Most are familiar with this iconic scene in which Harry Potter receives his wand, the only other wand made of the same phoenix as Voldemort's. The bestowing or acquisition of a weapon is a stage in the classic hero's journey. The weapon proves to be uniquely suited to the hero, either before or after the bestowal but most commonly before, by some prophecy attached to the one who wields it. These weapons are of either immense power, or status symbol, or both. Harry's wand, after all, proved to save his life like none other could in the standoff with Voldemort at the end of Goblet of Fire. The best example from classic mythology is Excalibur, the sword of legend given by the supernatural Lady of the Lake and pulled from the stone by Arthur Pendragon, proving himself to be the rightful King of Britain. In comics, perhaps the best example is Hal Jordan's Green Lantern Ring. Abin Sur, Green Lantern of Sector 2814, enters Earth's atmosphere, dying from a battle wound. He instructs his ring to seek out a worthy successor to his post, one with great willpower and without fear, who will be worthy to wield a Green Lantern Ring, one of the most powerful weapons in the universe. Once chosen, Jordan proves his worth by becoming the greatest lantern of all time. Number 2. The Supernatural Companion Disney's Aladdin is a staple of any happy childhood and Robin Williams' performance as the best wingman ever has fixed the idea of a benevolent genie into the public consciousness. Throughout the sequels and the animated series, Genie remains with his pal Aladdin, aiding him with his magic. Aladdin is courageous and compassionate, a diamond in the rough, but is mostly powerless without Genie. This type of symbiotic relationship between an average hero and a supernatural power is another archetype that shows up often in mythology. The story on which Disney's Aladdin is based, for example, features a young Chinese man making wishes to genies of both a magic ring and a lamp. Folklore, too, from various cultures, features stories of shamans or mages receiving power from an otherworldly entity through some talisman they carry with them. Examples of this archetype abound in comic books, but I've chosen to outline here the case of Jaime Reyes, the third character to carry the mantle of the Blue Beetle in DC Comics. The first was archaeologist Dan Garrett, who discovered the Blue Scarab artifact and drew super strength from an ancient Egyptian deity by uttering the phrase Kaji Da. When Garrett died, he passed the mantle of the Blue Beetle on to his student, Ted Cord, who rather than draw power from an unknown source, used his wealth, training, and tactical know-how to become a Batman-style Blue Beetle. Eventually, the original Scarab fell into a teenager's hands by accident, and it bound itself to the spine of young Jaime Reyes. Fully unlocked now, Reyes can draw much more power from the Scarab than Garrett ever could, including body armor and weapons. The Scarab reveals itself as a genetically engineered alien weapon named Kajida that arrived on Earth in ancient times. It becomes Reyes' own personal alien genie, giving him the powers to be a hero throughout their symbiotic bonding. Number 3. The Armor of the Gods How are you doing that? I don't know! Where are you doing that? Whether a force field or a magic shield, 
The armor of the gods is a common archetype throughout mythology. In The Incredibles, Violet was born with the power to create force fields. It's in her genetic makeup, her creation. The Fantastic Four's Invisible Girl, on whom Violet is based, also received her force field abilities from above, in space. Of course, in ancient mythologies, the armor came directly from the gods, imbued with their deific power. Zeus's shield, for example, the Aegis, gained its own unique legend. Forged from the indestructible hide of Amalthea, the she-goat who nursed Zeus as an infant, it represents a protective power from above, even to the head Olympian god. Athena, Zeus's daughter, serves as his shield-bearer and soon lends the Aegis to the hero Perseus to help him slay Medusa. The Gorgon Medusa turned to stone all who gazed upon her, so by looking only at her reflection in the polished surface of the shield, Perseus was able to behead her. Legend says the reflection of Medusa's stony gaze burned itself into the Aegis, and either turned to stone or struck mortal fear into the hearts of all who opposed Olympus. Choosing Athena as their city patron, Athenians would likewise carry shields with the image of a snake-haired Medusa depicted on their surface. In the post-crisis DC universe, Wonder Woman's bracelets were even forged from shards of the Aegis. Crossing them before her then channels the greater shield and allows her to repel forces much larger than the area of her wrists. Perhaps the most famous shield from comic books though is Captain America's Vibranium Star-Clad Disc. Though forged by man, the vibranium comes from a meteorite which fell from the heavens into the land that would one day become Wakanda. Cap's shield vibrates on the molecular level, allowing it to absorb the impact of bullets and almost anything else. Number 4. The Do-It-Yourself I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. Your skills are complete. Star Wars fans know that an important step in becoming a Jedi is to create your own lightsaber. Creating one's own weapon proves an intricate knowledge of its capabilities and how to best wield it in battle. Luke Skywalker created his own lightsaber, symbolizing his own identity as a Jedi, divorced from the path his father chose. Heroes throughout mythology create their own custom weapons as well, suited to their specific strengths and the values they represent. It is stated in some stories, and assumed in others, that Robin Hood crafted his own longbow to fight the Sheriff and the powers of Nottingham. The most effective longbows were custom made for the height of the archer, from yew wood that would have been plentiful in Sherwood Forest. Created in Wales and brought to popularity in England, the longbow allowed for precision long-range combat. It was the great equalizer, allowing the archer a chance against stronger hand-to-hand -hand combatants. It is a fitting weapon then for Robin Hood, who came to represent the cause of the common folk and peasantry against a tyrannical government. Comic books too feature heroes who create their own weapons, custom tailored to suit their own abilities. Iron Man created his suit to work off the arc reactor that was already keeping his heart beating. His suit's weapons then become an extension of his wounded heart, making amends for the suffering caused by his arms manufacturing. Batman creates his signature batarangs to terrify and non-lethally subdue criminals in accordance with his mission. The most famous hero-crafted weapon, however, might be Spider-Man's web fluid and web shooters. Once bitten by the radioactive spider and given the proportional strength, agility, and spidey sense of a Spider-Man, Peter Parker completes the theme by creating a revolutionary web fluid and fitting his suit with web shooters at the wrists. They reflect his character as well as the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Though he has the strength to beat the life out of criminals, he chooses instead to web them up and leave them for police. Number 5. The Item at Hand you have three seconds. One. Two. Rapunzel's frying pan in the movie Tangled was more than just a running joke. The pan is a symbol of domesticity, home, hearth, and nurturing. Being pure of heart and locked in a tower all her life, these are the only abilities Rapunzel knows how to use. She does not allow that to keep her from adventure, though. Instead of lamenting her small knowledge of life, she uses it. 
She sets out with Flynn to see the floating lanterns and clings to her cast iron experience in the face of challenges or threats. Her boldness about her past and what she wants from her future inspires others who begin using the frying pan as well. In mythology, found everyday items at hand hold similar significance for heroes in times of battle. When laid upon by Philistines, Samson, God's appointed liberator of the Israelites, grabs a nearby jawbone of a dead donkey and uses it to slay 1,000 of his attackers and win the day. He sets up the symbolism himself then by stating, With a donkey's jawbone I have made donkeys of them. Donkeys are pack animals, forced to serve by carrying loads. The Israelites were forced to serve the Philistines at the time. By using the jawbone of a dead donkey to slay his own masters, Samson shows his deed to be more than merely self-defense or petty revenge, but the divine retribution against the nation who oppressed God's people. In comics and science fiction, one of the most celebrated item at hand weapons is Doctor Who's sonic screwdriver. His constant repurposing of such a basic utilitarian tool represents his own ingenuity and resourcefulness, and that with the desire to do the right thing, the right tools and opportunities will find you. In the realm of superheroes, though, it's hard to think of a better example of someone who takes a mundane item and makes it powerful with their abilities than Gambit from the X-Men. With his mutant ability to control kinetic energy, Gambit charges up playing cards and throws them as makeshift bombs. The character is sometimes depicted as a gambler, which makes decks of playing cards obvious and present objects, but the cards also speak to his nature as a character. He has a background working for villains. He's a gamble for the X-Men to take in, and is always a bit of a wild card. In true comic form, all aspects of his character and design speak symbolically to the whole. I could list other weapon archetypes, and other examples of the ones we've mentioned here, but I'll cap this video at 5 and let you do the rest. In the comments, let me know what other examples you can think of, from either mythology, pop culture, or of course superheroes. If this list video proves as popular as the last, I'll be sure to make another one soon. So thanks to all who have shared these videos, don't forget to click like and subscribe, and until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the hero stories you love. Thanks for watching.